Okay, Unit 4, Lesson 8 continued. This is Part 5. We're going to learn about uh, some special uh, factoring here, one called difference of squares factoring, the other one called perfect square trinomials. Okay, uh, these two patterns can help shortcut uh, or factor a binomial if it's different squares or shortcut uh, AC factoring in a very specific situation. All right, so two objectives for today. Number one is I want to be able to identify perfect square trinomials and use the shortcut to factor. And then number two, I want to be able to identify difference of two squares pattern and use it to factor a uh, binomial. Okay, so before we begin, it's important to have an understanding of what exactly a perfect square is. Okay, it's a number that has a whole number square root. These are all perfect squares. Okay, two, two times two is four, three times three is nine. So we would say the square root of 16 is four, the square root of 25 is five, and so on. All right, so that's just, those are perfect squares. Okay, now the two patterns we have to learn. All right, let's start with difference of squares. All right, because this is one that you absolutely have to know how to use. Perfect square trinomials are great to know. However, you could still do AC factoring and do these problems. But if you could recognize it, it saves you a ton of time. All right, so difference of two squares is exactly what the name says. You have a difference. Difference means subtract. All right. Subtract. Two squares, meaning there are two numbers that are perfect squares. Right there and right there. If you happen to have a difference of two squares, we can factor it as a minus b, a plus b. Okay, and we'll uh, go a little bit more detail on that in a second. Okay, perfect square trinomials happens when you have a perfect square in front, okay, and in back, just like difference of squares, okay, and in the middle, the middle is twice the product of the squares, the square roots that you have there. Okay, and it fits this pattern. If it's a plus sign here, it's a plus b, a plus b. If there's a minus sign, it's a minus b, a minus b. And we could also write it uh, as a square using an exponent. Right? I think it'll make more sense when we get to the actual examples. All right, so how to determine if you have a difference of squares or a perfect square trinomial? The first thing is a simple count of terms. So if you look, I'm going to use these steps as we do these right here. All right. Notice example one says determine if each problem is a different squares pattern or a perfect square trinomial. If no, tell why. So difference of squares have two terms. So for example, B has two terms, C has two terms, and D has two terms. All right. These are possibly difference of squares. All right. Now we're going to look at the next one. Are the first and last terms perfect squares? So when I look at B, I see a 3 here. That's not a perfect square. So we would say, all right, this is not difference of squares. No, because 3 is not a perfect square. I have no clue what the square root of 3 is, so therefore it's not a perfect square. However, when I look at C, 25, I know the square root of 25 is 5. I know the square root of 9 is 3. These are both perfect squares. So let's move on. So we check two terms. All right, are the first and last term perfect squares? Check, did that. Are you subtracting? Yes, we are. If you said yes to all this, use the pattern for factoring. All right, so we would say that this, by the way, is a difference of two squares. When I look at D, that was my other two-termed problem. All right, when I look at D, notice again, I have a perfect square in front. And I, I kind of skipped over this in example C. But when we look at D, all right, all variables with even exponents are perfect squares. All variables with odds are not. So 2 is an even number. I know that's a perfect square. I look over here. 4 is a perfect square. So is y squared because it's being squared. The square root of y squared is y. All right. And then are we subtracting? Yes. So then once again, this is a difference of two squares. So it's recognizing patterns right now. 
Let's take a look at A, the, la the only one that we skipped over. All right, so notice difference of squares has to have two terms. This has three terms. So we're thinking maybe it's a perfect square trinomial. Okay, so it says, are the first and last terms perfect squares? Well, yes, but the sign in front matters here. Okay, we didn't really talk about that with difference of squares, but if you notice the pattern for perfect square trinomials, all right, we want a positive here. We want a plus sign, all right? And we would consider that not a perfect square because it's negative 16. Okay, so we would say no because of the subtraction. No because we are subtracting 16. Okay, so we didn't see an example of a perfect square trinomial yet. We will as we move on. All right, here's some new try problems for you. Now let's deal with some factor. Okay, so first of all, notice that these are all binomials. So we're thinking difference of squares. All right, the square root of x squared is x. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this for a second as x pulling the 2 out. This is from unit 3. You should know this. The square root of 25 is 5. So what I'm doing is I'm rewriting my problem. This is really x getting squared, and this is 5 getting squared. I have subtraction in the middle, so I would put it into my pattern, which is a minus b, a plus b, where this is a and this is b. So this is x minus 5 and x plus 5. Okay, so that's the pattern that we're going to use. Let's take a look at b. Again, 9 is a perfect square. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of x squared is x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as 3x getting squared. All right, subtracting from that, I'm going to do the square roots here. This is 10y getting squared. All right, if you need to verify this, you know from unit 3 that you can distribute your exponents. 3 squared is 9, and then there's a 1 here we multiply to get x squared. All right, I'm going to fit it in the pattern. This is my a, this is my b. The pattern says a minus b, a plus b. All right, so again, it helps you to write your perfect squares, or your square roots, I mean. All right, example C. I'm going to factor out a lead coefficient. I have a lead coefficient of 1. This is something we're going to go in greater detail tomorrow with the notes. All right, but as of right now, I'm going to take out the negative 1 so that I have x squared minus 1 inside. That's a GCF. I'm dividing everything by negative 1. Okay, so that's no big deal. Again, you'll learn more about this tomorrow. What I have here is a difference of squares still. All right. I would say once again that x is getting squared, and 1 is a tricky one because 1 is a perfect square. So 1 is getting squared. So this is my a, this is my b. I have a minus b, a plus b, and I took out a GCF at the beginning of this problem of negative 1. I need to include that with my answer. So that is the complete answer. All right, that's difference of squares factory. Let's move on. Okay, you got some U-try problems there. All right, our last three deal with perfect square trinomials. All right. Perfect square trinomials works pretty much the same way. I'm going to see if I have perfect squares here and here. All right, this is x getting squared, and that's 4 getting squared. Okay, now I have to check this middle term. The way I check this middle term is simple. Multiply these two together. So x times 4 is 4x, and then double it. I get 8x. Okay, this is a perfect square trinomial. It's a subtraction problem, so I'm going to write x minus 4 squared. That's factored. You could do easy trinomial factoring. Fine. All right, and easy trinomial factoring is probably faster for you right now. However, you get to this problem, AC factoring is probably something you're still struggling with. So knowing this could help save some work. This is 3x getting squared. That's 7 getting squared. Now we need to check the middle term. 3x times 7 is 21x, and if I double 21, I get 42. This works. 
it's a plus sign so I'm putting a plus sign in the middle there you go or once again you could write it like this they say the same thing want to point out to you however once again that that sign is that sign that sign is that sign which is that sign right there and right there all right one more to go here same situation all right big numbers all right I realize right off the bat that that's a perfect square that's 10x getting squared and this is 1y getting squared so if I do 10x times 1y that's gonna be 10xy and if I double that I get 20xy so this is a perfect square trinomial again notice that this is a plus sign alright so when I go to do this I'm gonna write 10x plus 1y which we really don't need to 1 and that's getting squared alright so keep in mind that sign is that sign right there again you could do AC factoring on these problems but if you understand perfect square trinomials you'll save yourself a ton of time alright and it's so easy once you learn the pattern it takes a little bit of work to learn it but you certainly have the ability to learn it alright just take your time ask questions if you have them remember at the bottom here we're reading this okay if you don't know how to do something please tell us alright sometimes we check in homework and we see everyone knows this because all you do is steal it from the front and no one ever has anything here but yet you have tons of questions you should be telling us something here alright and then keep in mind do some extra work to get yourself to learn either rewatch the video and sometimes it helps to rewatch the video the next day instead of directly after watching it the first time that way you get all the extra practice in class you get the ex extra explanation and then you're starting to figure it out then go back and rewatch it and then maybe that kind of lets it sink in okay so different ideas but you got to put in a little bit of extra work during factoring to learn this stuff all right it's, it's mostly brand new to you see you in class